All right, guys, and welcome to the Chit Chat Show on Elegota TV and Elegota TV Radio. My name is Idafi Matthew Sogana. You guys love to call me the Elegota One of Sports. And uh, today on the Chit Chat Show, I have um, a wonderful guy. A guy who, this is one of those guys you say he's been there, done that. He's also, when it comes to Nigerian football and understanding the system and then doing it in Nigeria, going outside Nigeria, in Europe, different parts of Europe, as well as... Uh, in South Africa, is the guy to go to. If you want to understand football from playing it in Europe, uh, playing it in South Africa, also getting an academy, knowing the ins and outs, the inner workings of the game, this is the guy you want to talk to. So uh, a couple of days ago, the talk of immortalizing of Rashidi Yakini came up. It was the conversation that everybody was talking about. Oh, Yakini, Yakini. the sports minister went and started uh, a campaign that we shouldn't have done. And, and then the NFL followed up with, uh, first, the sports minister came out and said they want to put Rachidi Yakini's mother on a 10,000 naira stipend, and they did all this publicity, press release. The press release was worth a billion naira, but then it was 10,000 naira they were doing to give to the woman. And then NFL, not, not wanting to be done, went a step further and decided, okay, we're going to give her 30,000 naira every month, and then as well, give the mother of, uh, of Paraji 30,000 naira every month. We all know that that thing is washed. Where these women, these people cannot come and be drawing debt. At some point, if you don't pay them, they cannot even complain. That's the simple truth. But then I, 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 I thought I saw some time ago when he talk, when he, he tweet, posted something on Facebook that he knew Yakini from his days in Kaduna, and I said to myself that I will need to talk to him and let him give me give me his, the idea of the Yakini that he knew. We all know actually Yakini, the ghost father, go king, highest goal scorer, African Nations Cup, 1992, Senegal, 92, highest goal scorer, African Nations Cup, 1994, went to the World Cup, scored Nigeria's first goal at the World Cup, all-time highest goal scorer for Nigeria. You know, so much to talk about actually Yakini. But then, not every one of us have the experience to say we know him from close quarters. This man that I'm going to talk to, know him from Bruce Potter. And you know, at the Lagota TV, we pride ourselves as the king of grassroots. We focus a lot on grassroots. Hence, our work with the Lagos State FA Cup, the Suru Liri League, which we are strongly part of promoting and working hard to make it grow. And every day we come across Academy. I have been a victim of a fake agent before. We're going to talk about all of that on this show today. And no better person to talk about it than Mohamed Lawa. Yes, this is a man who's been there, done that. He's played in Belgium, he's played in Germany, played for Anderlecht, played for Fortuna Dusseldorf, played for the Wyoming National in Nigeria, and also played for Niger Dock in Lagos. Some of you who are watching that don't even know teams like Niger, Niger Dock, Nepa Egbeam, and you know, all those things. Well, he was going to talk to us about it, refresh our mind, and then we'll take a cursory look at the MPFL and compare it to the PSL and see what we can borrow there to make the MPFL better. I believe that we have more talent than them, but I also believe that they have better organization, better sponsorship than us. So there's somewhere we can meet at the middle ground and make things better. Uh, Mohamed Lawa, welcome to the Chit Chat Show with me on Elevator TV. How are you? Uh, I'm good, big boss. Uh, it's a pleasure being with you and with your viewers also. Uh, first off, when you start calling me boss now, they will not start thinking that I have arrived. These are the kind of things that leads to kidnapping. Please, I'm your boy. You, I'm trying to grow. When I grow up, I want to be like you. Uh -huh. It's because I know that I want to be with you on the show. That's why I want to go and cut my hair so that you know, I'll be like, like I'm using my, my hair to do competition with you. Okay, so let's start. Uh, where did you grow up? Give us an intro of yourself. How you grew up, how you came to you know, be in this football business. Let's hear you. Okay, my name is Mohamed Lawa. I'm, I was born in Kaduna, and uh, I grew up in Kaduna. And uh, I started playing football like uh, every other Nigerian or African kids, I will say in general, which uh, we all love soccer. We started it from the street. Unfortunately, uh, right from when I was a kid, all the top players that are around our vicinity, which happens to become great top stars and legends of Nigerian football, not only Nigerian Africa and uh, the whole of Europe, happens to be around there. They all like me from when I was young. They believe that, oh, I have uh, a brighter future. They've been guiding me. People like uh, Rashid Yakini, as we spoke, people like uh, Tijani Babangida and all that. So 
I, I got a break very, very early to go to, 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 to the under-17 camp. That is the team that was preparing for the Japan 93. Japan 93. Then, yes, one year most team. We were camping in Lagos to, to, to Rojeni. Then from there, I got uh, to sign for Niger Dog. From Niger Dog, I moved to Umwanyao National. From Umwanyao National, uh, one of the people that I respected because of this job that I was doing, who is called Chochil Olise, the elder brother of uh, Olise. Olise, yes, came with some with some club management to clear some players from Wanyao National. And when they saw me in training, funny enough, they, they said, no, instead of those players that went there for trials, they want, they, they needed me instead. And then I moved there, went to Belgium. Unfortunately for me, I didn't play there a lot. Moved to Germany, I had to move during just on the pre-season friendlies, go to Germany. From Germany, I found myself in South Africa. And from South Africa, I played for Tembisa Classic, which is called Marisberg United now, and uh, uh, HP Silver Stars, which is Platinum Stars. And that is when I retire now to become a soccer agent and uh, form an academy both in South Africa and in Nigeria. Okay, so uh, you have an academy called the Future African Football Academy, right? Yes. And this academy is based in South Africa. Where in South Africa? And it's also based in Lagos. Where in Lagos? I mean, in Nigeria. Where in no. Nigeria? In Kaduna. Okay. In Kaduna. Future of African Football Academy is... I have it in Johannesburg, in Lagos. And then in, in South Africa, in Johannesburg, and then in uh, in Nigeria, I have it here in Kaduna. Okay, uh, have you noticed that Mohammed somehow you now look like South Africans and you kind of like talk like <laughs> South Africans? Have you not? Has anybody told you that? Because I've been living here for 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 a very long time now. I've been living here now Let's for sixteen to, years. Let's go back to. The Rashidi Yakini you knew when you were growing up. Okay? Yes. I mean, Rashidi Yakini is, is, is an African icon, is a national treasure. Too bad that we don't have Hall of Fame in Nigeria. I think his name will be up there along with people like Shego Degwami, Arukia Mesivaka, Chema Christian Chuku, Baba Otu, and the rest of them. But then one day we would make it happen. Talk to me about the little you know of Rashidi Yakini. Yeah, Rashidi is someone that, um, in my opinion, I believe uh, a lot of people let him down. A lot of people let him down. It's what do you mean? You what do you mean by a lot of people let him down? You know, a lot I, keep, in I keep hearing this thing that a lot of people let Yakini down. How mm -hmm. would people let him down? Is it that was Rashid Yakini sick or you had stroke? No, 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 no. Okay, so to come to that. But Yakini, a lot of people, let me start from the beginning. Let me say, a lot of people who don't know him, like you said, who know him as the goal scorer, who will see him only in the field, who saw him as a superstar, does did not know who really Rashid Yakini is. So that was why it was. Yeah, that was why a lot of people. After he retired, and now he is living in Ibadan, a lot of people begin to spread rumors that he is getting mad. Because these same people did not know Rashidi Yekini from the beginning. Rashidi Yekini, right from the world go, he, he was a long, he's a, he's a, he's a long ranger. He, he only connects with people when it comes to training or matches. Once Yekini is not in the field, you hardly see him with anybody. You hardly, he doesn't uh, mix, he doesn't mix, he doesn't socialize a lot. He is a man that keeps to himself a lot. 
So when he retires, after a lot of people have known him now, because of the way he lives so a very, very simple life, a lot of people thought this guy, he, 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 he has lost it. But he didn't. He didn't. Yekini is a very, very committed footballer. Very. Right from the time I know him, he can spend the whole day in the soccer field. He can spend the whole day in the soccer field and wherever he will go, he wants, he, he goes only where there is football. You cannot discuss with Yekini. He cannot mix with you or discuss with you about anything or have nothing to do with you if it was not around football. football. And that was what made a lot of, even his teammates fail to understand him sometimes because whatever they, they are doing in camp, he is always like isolating himself most of the time. Anything that is that involves the whole team, he is there. But once it is done, he is going to go back into his room and he keeps to himself most of times. Only people who are very, very close to him, he selects people. Not everyone gets into a king's corner. He picks people that come close to him. And that was one of the reasons why the people begin to spread those uh, malicious rumors about him beginning to get mad and all. Would you, would you not say that part of the blame should be for Rashidi Yakini. For a man who makes his living and his career in a sport that involves a team, that involves a group of people, he needs pass from people. When he scores a goal, he needs a defender to deep, defend where the goalkeeper has to keep well so that that goal results in victory instead of defeat. To live an isolated life, is that not oxymoronic? Is that not something that is very, very ironic, like opposite of what it does? You know, it's like you meet me and they say, I don't know how to talk. And you'll be like, this guy talk on radio. This guy talk on TV. And he doesn't know how to talk. Is it not ironic? Would you not put some of the blame on Rashidi Yakini not being able to adapt a lifestyle that opens the door for people to get to him? Yeah, but you must remember the way those days and now there is a big difference. Sure. There is no there is no footballer now who can live the kind of life Rashidi Akini live and survive. Now the world is very, very open. It's very, very if you are not social, in fact, if you are a footballer now and you want to succeed without a very, very good personality and having a very organized life, you're going nowhere. You're going nowhere. And that is one of the things that I try to, 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 to impart, to teach my own young players from the development because the personality is very, very important. If I take you back, Rashidi Akini has a very, very rough upbringing. He had it very, very hard, very, very tough. Uh, if I should say, I will tell you that uh, Yakini was almost, almost like a street kid. Almost like a street kid. He grew up without his, his father, he grew up without his mom. His father died very early and the mom now left Kaduna to go back to, 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 to Ira, you know, where, where he originally came from. Yeah. And then, she left him in, in back in Kaduna because he loves soccer. He doesn't want to go anywhere. He was sleeping on the street. He moves from one place to, 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 to another. Fortunately, maybe you have had one of his interviews where he is mentioning a guy called Ade, who is a coach. She yeah. youth coach. He, he, he coached me also. And he developed a lot of young players. I'm telling you, Many big names that uh, uh, comes out from the north in uh, Kaduna, in particular, work under that guy back in the uh, 80s and the, and, the, and the 70s and late 80s. So he, that guy, was the one who helped Ekini to start getting him his act together. And from his team, he's the one who took Ekini to the first club because that guy was a superstar playing for a team called UNTL in, in Kaduna. Now he took him to the UNTL, and then that is the beginning of uh, of the Rashidi Akini that we all get to know. As soon as he gets into UNTL, 
people did not know how many goals if they were keeping record if they were keeping record of the amount of goals that guy scored during his time at UNTL goodness me i have never seen somebody who scores lot of goals like 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 Ekini. he scored lot and lot of goals that during the state league they were playing in the state league there in some games he would score 10 i'm telling you UNTL used to hammer people mercilessly all because of Ekini. and he spent about uh, 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 once he start playing for them after a year, that is how he moves to to to, to shooting to ICC. And I was not surprised as soon as he gets to to ICC. Within three months of him being at ICC, he was already a regular in the Super Eagles. That was as far as 19, 1984, and he was lucky. The coach of the of the Super Eagles that time was uh, Onigwinde, who happens to be coaching the the, the 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 shooting stars at that time also. So you see, that upbringing contributed. And I won't lie to you, back then from the North, if you grow in the North then, what we thought of the national team, if you are going to the national team, we believe that there is so much juju. There is so much juju there, somebody can, can, can if you are fighting for position with somebody, is going to do, so, sometimes you get scared you think hey if i go now and then i we start that we are doing it somebody maybe is targeting me or whatever whatever you know all those kind of things which you can't take away up till now people in in, in, in football there are still some that believe those things uh those things happen so yakini yes if we judge him from the this era that we are now yeah he is at uh, he he also contributes, but if you really really know the situation at then, he never run away. When there is a team meeting, when there is anything pertaining to the team, he is going to be there. But one thing you must be sure: when the others are sitting somewhere socializing and what I am telling you, Yakin is never he cannot. He's just going to be in his room. He likes keeping to himself. Okay, uh, that's. For your kidney, there's uh, something you mentioned now. Uh, and when I was growing up, to it was a regular, it was a regular conversation. Uh, there was talk that Friday Ikbo, no, you know, so many talk. Friday Ikbo used juju for this first year, or allow or this. This juju talk was not just another Nigerian thing, it was everywhere. Uh, I remember one of my friends went to play for Nobi Stars. <laughs> now, this is funny, but. <laughs> the story is funny. You know why it's funny? Yeah. They said that, uh, okay, he took uh, somebody's position. So in the training, the person had told him that, look, you have come here now, I'm no longer playing. I will make sure that you have big scrotum so that you have big scrotum. But you know, it is, it is when he was telling us, he did say it in English. So he said it like, yes. I'm going to make sure I say you get yeah. big focus so that you're not going to see my yes. <laughs> you, know, you know, and you know the way people used to brag. Somebody would say something like, "If I not do you this thing, eh, make you not say I not come for Tupu." You know, and, and the way the way the way the things were. So once you have, yeah, yes, once you have injury, you start thinking, ah, Naimo. That yes, 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 yes. Then yes. Your psychology, and then you know this thing start happening like that, but. I mean, you played in the league. You played practically almost everywhere. Is that juju in football? Is that voodoo in football? Because we used to hear that Cote d'Ivoire, Mali, Senegal, these people, they do. <laughs> Even Ghana, Nigeria, 2000, the, the Nigeria versus Senegal game, they said uh, at halftime, we're losing 1 0 to Senegal. That's more like had to go into the goalposts, pick up something. Sometimes they'll say urinate. It's like, you know, so many funny <laughs> rubbish that I used to hear when I was growing up anyway. But me, as a player, I was a dribbler. And I used to tell people that Voodoo and Nobody, I'll dribble you. If the ball yeah. comes my leg, see, see, just yeah. make sure you stop me before the ball comes. If I control that ball and you face me, you will kiss the grass. You. And I don't care your juju, you will kiss the grass. Your Jasmine cannot walk. But then, this Voodoo thing, I remember when Fernando Torres came to Chelsea and people said that. Uh, you know, there's this talk that Didier Drogba buried Igu at Stamford Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> so you personally 
tell me, what is your voodoo experience in football? The, the one you know, the one you see, and the one you heard. What's your voodoo experience? But you see, to be, to, 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 to be honest to you, first and foremost, you know, everything works according to someone's belief. Yeah. Sure. And like you said, like you said, we cannot run away from it. If you said those thoughts doesn't exist, you are lying. Some players clearly believe in it. Some doesn't. But I have also got uh, uh, um, a fair share experience of uh, about this uh, juju team because there was one time in ninety, I think it's ninety two or ninety two, somewhere there. When Wester Hall was coaching the Super Eagles. Yeah. And then we were camping in Otta. I was part of the James Peters under 20, which is preparing to go to Mauritius 1993, Mauritius 93. And then, so the local base, Super Eagles, are also camping at that Obasanjo camp. So we, we, we used to. The, the training, we go to training first at two, the day will come uh by four. The day will come at four and all that we share. We even the, the, the rest the, the restaurant is we go eat first before them and all that. So there is one player, maybe you heard of him, Ishola Babatunde. He was he was from Kaduna, he was playing for ranchers. He I was, know him, ranchers best player. He was, yeah, he was scoring goals then. And he was part of this local uh, Eagles. So he goes. He will. He he told me. He was telling me in Ausa that and you see all these people. They are scared of. Uh, they scared of juju. They are scared of juju. You see now. And the toilet there in the camp. Most times you fetch water. If you want to bath, you come out of your room to fetch water and then go and. But if you toilet, sometimes you must come to get and go on. So you can fetch water if you keep it and another player is coming. Because there's so many players, there's someone come and he just saw the water, he will pick it and go and, and bat. Now this guy, he will just go and get, if he has his water, he wants to put it on the sun, you know, on the sun. Yes, so it can it get a bit, a bit warm. He knows that if he keeps it and go, before he comes back, somebody must have taken it and you. So now he will tell me, look, look now. We will go behind because there's so many, it's a farm. There is yeah. all these chickens, what, 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 so all the, 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 feather. the this thing of their feather, he will pick like three or so. Then when he keeps the water, he will put one inside and one in front, one at the back. He will tell me, watch, nobody is going to touch it. And he will go. He that water can stay there for days. Nobody. <laughs> nobody nobody go next to it. Everybody <laughs> wants to go heaven, but nobody <laughs> wants to die. Because people, I say, yo. So this juju thing, hey, Papa, is it has messed Africans' head. But for me personally, I don't believe it. It's it exists, but. You cannot run away from it. You see it everywhere. When you come to South Africa, that's when you will know whether these guys here, you can't even tell them of anything. They believe in the, the juju completely. More than any other African country, I think, I guess. More than Cote d'Ivoire? Hey, these people, they believe in this thing. Because in Cote d'Ivoire, when you, when you go there, you can find strong Christians who yeah. will tell you you can find Muslims from there. Here, <laughs> my friend, they believe in ancestors and those things. So the, the muti, it, they call it muti, not juju. They believe it has to, it connects with their ancestors. Their ancestors are the ones who, hey Baba, hey, you need to, <laughs> this is, is, is not funny. These guys, they really, really believe in, uh, in muti. Especially if you come here early, early, when, uh, early 2000, wow. It's too much. Your jersey must be soaked. Your this they used to fight with uh, the team I played for Tembisa Classic. I was playing with um, Ida Peterside. You, you know, 
So he's a he's a he's a Christian born again. Christian. Yes. And then these guys they don't want to know. There must there is so many rituals you must do before a game. So many. And then he will start fighting. It's the reason he left the team. Is the reason he left the team. He was doing well, but now everywhere, he every day. So he was not using the muti. They now put him aside and begin to use the other goalkeeper who 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 who, who does muti. It's African team. This it's African. If it exists, then I guess African teams should be winning the the the, the, the all the major tournaments in the That's world. That's what I said. That's what I said. And 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 you know. You played in the Nigerian League, even though back in the 90s. And you have been in South Africa for like 16, almost 20 years now, right? Yes. Which means you saw South African football come from... You played in the league when the, the league was not disorganized. There was not much money. And right before your eyes, you saw the league rise from nothing to right now almost the biggest league in Africa. What did they do right in South Africa in terms of not just the administrators, the administrators, the clubs, the fans? I know that one advantage that South Africa had was the 2010 World Cup because it paved way for infrastructural development, good road, healthcare facilities, perfect stadiums, and you know, upgrading media. We, we even depend on their media as it is, and they are, they are treating us the way they like. But what are the things that the administrators in South Africa, the players, the clubs, and the fans, what are the things that they've done well that we can learn from? I know that player-wise, our players are still more talented than South African players. But then, talent is nothing without an organized structure. So what can we learn from South Africa? You see, what the South African... PSL did that really, really help them and uh, give them a proper organized league. In the earlier stage, they because they accept, they accept that they don't know. You, I don't know if you get me. Yeah. You know, one thing is for you to put me in charge of something. And when you put me in charge, I know that I don't have the capabilities. I don't have the capacity to be able to, to, to move this thing forward. But, and then I just take it. And when I take it, I, I'm not doing the things, but I, and I don't want to move from it. I don't want to let anyone in. And yet I can't move the thing forward. The South Africans understand that earlier that they don't know. And what they've been doing for the past, I think, Almost the early stage in the 2000, from about 2000 till 2010, or 2000 and yeah, 2009, 2010, I think 2012. They always get the CEOs always always came from Britain. The league, the person in charge of the league, yeah, is from Britain. They always get the English people. Now these English people come and organize the league and come and organize the league. Most of the officials, they are busy understudying them, understudying them, understudying them. And now when the team keeps coming forward, now these guys who are working under them, they are beginning to know. They are beginning to know how to be, be, be able to, 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 to push the league, how to how to organize, because organization is the first criteria of any organization. If you are not well structured, you, you, you want to fail, no matter what, no matter how much money you put into a system that is not well structured, well organized, I'm telling you, you are going nowhere. But if you put less money in a very organized setup, good structure, you are bound to grow and the team will begin to bring in money. Now, the South Africans, they are handling the league by themselves. 
they are handling the leagues by themselves and everything looks to be perfect. When you rated one of the, the seventh, the seventh most profitable league in, 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 in the world. Okay, so see how it changed. Now, now, what amazes me is because I was going to go there. I saw that report that the South African League. I saw that report. I think it was from Sports Illustrated or so, and I was shocked that South African League is the seventh most profitable league in the world. And I was counting: there's the English League, and then there's the the Spanish League, and then there's the German League, and then there's the Italian League. I think the French league, uh, one other league before the the South African league, and then all other leagues in Europe, in South America, and the rest were under them. And the first thing that crossed my mind is, this is not a league that regularly sells players abroad. The South African league really says, I think scarcely sell players to anybody. So, this profit is more like an IGRO, an internally generated revenue. They did, you know, in Nigerian football, the clubs will fold up if they don't sell for five years, they don't sell one player abroad. They will die. They would die. But here is a league where within themselves, they can transfer players within themselves for $10 million, you know, 30 million rands, 50 million rands. And here we are. The, the most expensive transfer on record that we know is Victor Sime from Ultimate Striker, the Football Academy in Lagos, to Vosbol, 3.5 million euros. That's like the most expensive in Nigeria. South Africa have less than 60 million population. Nigeria have about 180 million population if I go with the last census. So let's even do the math and say the reason why they are making this money is their numbers, like the, they are able to put the league across to a given number. Now, statistics also that I saw says that South Africa have a, 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 a pool of 16.5 million addicted lovers of sports. Of this 16.5 million, the number one sport is rugby and then cricket. And number three is football. So in dividing it, football takes only 5 million addicted followers. Statistics also say that in Nigeria, there are 40 million Nigerians that are crazy about sports. Of these 40 million, 32 million are addicted to football. So herein lies my dilemma. Knowing that there are 32 million people that will do anything for football. And the yes. whole, whole Nigerian league, what we really need to turn it into what it is, is if we can convince only 2 million people to be crazy about the Nigerian league, we're good. So here we are, the market is there, the number is available, the product is there. But to take it from raw talent of players to the place where the fans would be addicted to it, it's what has been killing us. We are very quick to give the excuse that, oh, European football is taking over everything that we're doing here. But in South Africa, don't they watch European football as well? They do. Because when I watch fans soon, I see people from South Africa calling in on Fan Zone. I'm a fan of my United, fan of yes. Man City. So it means that they follow the English League in, in, in South Africa. They follow the La Liga. They follow the Bundesliga. Yes. So where did they get all this well with her to get it right with the fans, with the clubs, with the players and everything? And we just can't get it right. How? What do you think? You see, one of the it's a good uh, this thing that you raise, because if you look at the 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 players that come out from Nigeria every now and then, you can't find them coming out from South Africa. When you look at the um, the numbers, like you rightly mentioned, the numbers in South Africa they are not 
up to half of Nigerian population. But the thing is, the South Africans don't export their, their players as much as we do. The South Africans love their players. They love their teams. I can bet you now that even if you can bring a UEFA Champions League final to South Africa, and it is who are the big teams? Let me say with uh, Real Madrid, Juventus, Barcelona, Juventus, Juventus, because of Ronaldo has a lot of followers. You said you said Juventus, Barcelona, which means there is Messi and Barcelona. Or they are there here there is Ronaldo, who a lot of people love. You bring them to South Africa and say today they say you have a Champions League here in, 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 the, in the soccer city, the main stadium. And then in the next stadium there, you said Kaiser Chiefs is going to play Pirate. I can bet you all South Af that stadium at the, uh, the, the, the final of UEFA will be empty. They will all go to where the, 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 the Kaiser Chiefs game is. You know the reason why? Now in Nigeria, the, the brand is not which player. If I ask you now, maybe, okay, maybe one or two top scorers, you might know them. Maybe because you're a football person, you, you, you go to watch, you can give me some names. But if you go to the ordinary guy in, in the street of Potakot now, and you ask him to call you names of players in, um, in uh, Rivers United, he might not know. He might not know. Sometimes I find it amazing. I will be here. I will know a player who is playing at uh, uh, Rivers United. I will now look at Portacourt and say, okay, this is my friend. We played together before and what, what, what. So now he might know this guy. I want to talk to the player. If I call him and I'm telling him about that player, he will tell me he doesn't know him. Wow. He doesn't know him. <laughs> he doesn't even know him. Wow. Because we don't follow the league. The, 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 and whose fault is that? It has to be from the organization. No team in Nigeria is well organized. They call it a Nigerian professional league. None of the Nigerian teams is a professional team. None. I can tell you that here. And you, 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 are, you, you you've been around, you see you, what structure, what structure is there? How can the players be, 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 be marketable within the, within, the, within the setup? The player is only recognized when he has moved out of the Nigerian league. Yeah. When he was in Nigeria, I'm telling you, only those who are around, maybe the soccer scout, the soccer agent, okay, might, because now this is our business all, we will push to try to know who is who. And now, what did even the people, the authorities in Nigeria most really, really focus on and be strong at was that they have lost the market in Nigeria regarding players' movement. Now you mentioned the highest transfer or record from Nigeria is Victor Osime. Now Victor Osime, who makes that money? Is it a league club? It's an academy. All the academies are the ones who are moving players now. So now the clubs have to compete that market with academies. And there is a lot of players because most of the people who are in charge of these clubs, they, they, don't, I don't, they don't know exactly what they are doing. They don't know exactly what they're supposed to do. They don't have the capacity to run a football team. Because if a club, uh, an academy can sell a player for three point something, imagine if uh, uh, um, Rivers United. United or Cano Pillars or Ayimba, if every year or let's say every transfer window, there's two transfer windows in a, in a, in a season, if every transfer window they will be able to sell a player 3.5 million, 3.5 million dollars, what do you think? Do you think they will be looking at the government looking for money? Yeah. Do you think they won't be able to sustain themselves? But now where are they? They don't care. All they do, 
They put the player whoever is he on a high salary. They don't care if he can stay there. This young players, Osime is from I don't know which state. Maybe he's from Lagos. He's from Lagos. Yeah, but it's, it's from a dose state, now, but he grew up in Lagos. Now, all these guys from from all the teams from Edo could not discover who is Osime because there is the leak. Well, one day you will read uh, 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 one of the criteria for the team to be registered in the league must be they must have a junior team, they must do this, they must do that. All that in Nigeria is noise. They are good in talking on the papers, they are good on speaking on radio, and they speak to you on radio, perfect. But there is a difference between talking and doing. Implement those things that you know. You don't just, what is the use of an idea that you just have the idea, a wonderful idea, but you have it in you, just in your head without you implementing those ideas. Eh? You have a vision, but you cannot now bring out the vision for all of us to see. Me and you can sit and talk, what about the league? What about that in South Africa? If you come to South Africa to buy a player, eh, you are an European club, you must be ready. You must be ready to spend because they look after players very, very well. They pay nicely. In fact, I brought so many Nigerian league players here. And when they came, after just two, three months, they will be telling me, Kai, all this while they've been suffering. Why are they not been here? They've been playing in Nigerian league, the playing, you see, they move from Rangers to Ayimba, Ayimba, all the big teams, but still. Nothing is going on. Nothing is happening. And like I, like we can say it and say it and say it again. You play during the night. You 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 can see the difference. Even the quality is dropping. If so many in Kaduna, where I come from, I can tell you that there is no month that no month that eight to nine young players will not depart from 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 Nigeria to Europe. But do you know what? There is no one single uh, Premier League team in, in Kaduna. Yeah. One. Yeah. But look at the talent that is there. Every now and then, you must be a player from Kaduna is traveling out. No months, I'm telling you, except for this cook. If they, when the corona, uh, this thing clears up. Just, Clears up. I'm telling you, you can find more than 40 going out. But still, the authorities there cannot think, okay, if you form a Kaduna United and then try to seize and have an opportunity where all these special talent have to come under the umbrella of Kaduna United, scout them while the, nobody has seen them and get them because you are the government, you, you, you. They are more resources. They stand in a better opportunity. They've got better resources than almost everybody who is in the business. But alas, no, nobody cares. But when if they are going to be interviewed on TV or radio, they say whatever they want to say. No, Nigeria. Sometimes I get angry. I get angry if I'm remembering some things. Nigerian League, to be honest, I'm a big fan. And the yeah, I know. Of Nigeria League, and I, was, I am wishing and hoping that this league can be at a level where it's supposed to be because Nigerian League is the worst. How can a Nigerian player leave Iyimba to go to Sudan? How? For what reason? How can a player leave Kano Pillars and go to Libya? People go to Tanzania. One of the best Nigerian coaches will go to Tanzania to coach a club side in Tanzania. How comes? How? What? Because the league is, there is nothing in our league. And there is no country in Africa that loves football like Nigeria. 
Absolutely. We love our football. Absolutely. Nigeria, we love our football. If you can make stars out of the players in the league, the people will come out and watch. You, what you said earlier, I, I'm just, it's, it's like I should just keep listening to you because you've been raising valuable point upon point. I just wish there is a way you can reach to the authorities or you can voice all these things that you know out so that the authorities can hear. People who know and understand are not the ones who are in the position to implement things. People who doesn't are the ones who are in the position. And still yet, they're arrogant. They don't give chance for anybody who knows to try to tip them in one way or the other with one or two ideas where they can be able to get to the point. And if we keep going like this, I'm really sorry. I don't know what I will say. It's really sad. Okay, uh, I know that you've given me like a long time, but permit me to ask you maybe two or three more questions before I let you go. One is the latest trend that is happening. The latest trend now is first, let's 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 do it chronologically. Salisu Yusuf was accused of collecting money to feature players in the game, even if it means his team will lose it. And then it was banned. And then we said, uh, you know the way we talk in Nigeria, we are headline people. Even our politicians rule us by headline. Every week, when Nigerians are supposed to be asking, oh, how are you governing us? Why are you not doing this thing? Why is there bad road? Nigeria is the only country, for instance, that have terrible road around our seaport. If a seaport is the gateway to the nation's economy, the road there is supposed to be good for ease of business. But we are the only country, the best seaport in Nigeria is in Lagos. And we have the worst road around that support. But now, now the reason why I'm not talking politics here, but the government and the politicians realize that Nigerians like talking points. So every week they bring what talking point. Abi Akiari travel, dog shop money, snake swallow money. These things they 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 know that once they put it, the bloggers will use it as headline, social media will use it, comedians will now use it to do comedy. After the, if the thing is dying down. Oh, the president have gone to London for treatment. They will do talk again. And, you know, that's how they rule us. And most times when I look at this, I'll be like, why are Nigerians so easy to distract? Why are we so easy to distract? And even our sports administrators have mastered that act too. You notice today that ah, supporters club is fighting with Amaju. So we're discussing supporters club. We, in this country, were discussing. The only country that even have supporters club. But I'm coming to you now. You are now an intermediary, owner of an academy in Kaduna, another academy in Jobo. The business must be profitable for you to have headquarter and branch in two, comp in two countries, which is the home office and the international office. How much, like when it comes to taking players, how lucrative is the business of an academy? Because most times, People make it sound like, oh, we're trying to help young people. We're trying to just give them opportunity. But for a businessman, let's say I want to do the business of an academy or I want to own a professional club and I have to make a choice. How lucrative is it for me to own an academy? And how much capital will I invest before I start making money? You see, this is a very interesting question. Very, very interesting. And uh, you see, first and foremost, like you said, a lot of people, when they see they have money, they now try to, to go into anything that they hear people are doing that is like a, a trend. Yeah. And now when they get into it, when they get into it, they now realize, oh, this thing is not how... I thought. I thought it was. So now, before you go in, like I always tell, a lot of people will call me and say, no, what, what uh, they want to be, do this thing also. Some wants to be intermediary, some want to own the academy. I will tell you, okay, when someone who, who is in the right place at the right time is doing something, 
things will always be going smooth. Things yeah. will always be going right. But when the wrong person is at the wrong place, at the, at the right place, things will not go well. Now you don't know, you have money and you don't know anything about this thing, but you just know that, okay, I can see a good a player here, I just take him. It's not your money that will take him. First and foremost, it takes a lot. One, you as the, okay, the person, you have to be able to have the eye to discover the talent. Yeah. Because without the talent, there is no academy. There is no progress. The money will not come in. And if you have a business where you are always putting in and nothing is coming, you are always put, giving, putting out and nothing is coming in, you will lose interest. Yeah. No matter who you are, you will lose interest in that. Now, with me was that I was fortunate I have built contacts before starting the team. So it was a little bit easier for me. When I see the players, I, I move them. But mind you, in the first place, I did not just own the academy. I was already an intermediary before starting the academy. So already I've been taking players from the professional team set up and sell and give. So now from the money coming from, if I take a player from Rangers and I sell him to, 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 to a club overseas, when they pay me, now I'm using it in building the academy, bit, bit. And then what the people that, when I was starting, I told all the guys that I was involved in. I said, listen, we are going to be going stage by stage. This academy, now I'm open, I'm starting it, I'm going to be putting my own money. But my aim is for the academy to look after itself. Oh. I want this academy to get to a position whereby I will not take my money from my business to put in there. The academy now must be able to produce players and I sell players from the academy and I put that money back into the academy. Because the player come from the academy. Yeah. So if you are not able to separate it, you are going to be uh, in debt. You're going to be in debt because it takes a lot of money, especially when you deal with Nigerian, Nigerian, Nigerian players. Sometimes the academy players, you're not only taking care of the players, you're taking care even their parents also the every problem they they tell him okay now they had that oh uh, like day is it's is, is living in in, in South, is the manager to social person to social person so they just believe uh, that person now that your player came back and they saw him living in a very mighty house living driving a flashy car now they will look at his house look at everything they said well if he has that you who is his What's boss that? You are already you are, you are you are ten times you are ten times even you because once you said someone is your boss people believe he's on top of you so and now if the child come back home and say yo hey Elizabeth is my agent now is your agent yes it's my man ah, they see that the true true you you like him he's coming to tell them story to anything hey tell him your sister is not this or what what hey, the money they keep draining 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 and now you find some if you if, if they got the player instead of them to focus on the on the, the, the on their child and try to instill in him to push him to be able to move to the next level they focusing on who the, the, the who the owner of the academy is who the agent is i have seen a lot of people who started this business after I started. Some we started working together, then hey, when they see now, they will now be talking from behind. There is some guy who has money, they will be telling talking to him, talking to him, then 
he will tell them go and buy balls go and do this they get the players they say they have formed their own academy give them one year few months you will find there is nobody then they will come back to me i will say they <laughs> this thing it's not just easy like that it is not easy if you ask me like you said your question i said you said you want to have a professional team and you want or on an academy which one right now if you are in nigeria i will tell you on an academy it is much more profitable than uh, the professional team and that's the reason why because the nigerian football professional teams don't there is no what is, what, what are you going to what is the profit there is no profit that's why it's only the government who owns the teams because there is no profit if there is profit you see the way that all these individuals are coming to own soccer academies that's how everyone will be wanting to have a club but there is no profit everyone goes where the profit is and those academies that the fa did not think to say okay now let's regularize this industry because this industry there is a lot of money there but it doesn't have any association no any organization all the academies are no are under nobody i don't know if you get yeah, i do i do I, I'm, it's under nobody you you decide to on an academy now in Portacot, that is it. You can just go decide, get a field. If you have a property where the boys can stay fine, if you don't, even the players can be coming from their home. And then from there, you find on that three months or four months, you have sold two players. If you're fortunate, you've sold two players and you make the next thing you go to NFL, try to do an TMS, release the player okay what what nobody cares nobody and they are losing the market this is do you need money now why can't you get an association and put this under the umbrella and set a standard if you're going to start this you have to do this go through that go through that and then from there even if the money the teams is making you're going to be getting a, a, some like a tax you know like something that you taking out of each transfer that goes into like player. this post trust fund. Thank you. Now you are making you are making something of it. But when South Africa realized, you see now there is a league called multi choice, multi choice yeah. disc is for both players under 19. Each team, every of the PSL team have it. Those guys, there is money, there is incentives now those players who are all these young young players the all the teams now will sign them they will be earning salary now you find some they go to holland some they go to here still they are under the clubs the football teams make money from them now in my team i have boys from enugu in, if you go to can have boys from enugu boys from from Patakot, boys from everywhere they send boys to me now when the boys will come they will go nobody knows nobody knows only if he goes to europe after two three years or after six months if he grows rapidly quickly and then everybody knows him scoring goals in europe then wow everybody will be talking about him but how does he move in and out there is a that's what it, there is a federation just like the league has lmc now you you, you understand there's yeah. lmc there was use fund now yeah. use fund it loses its its space it doesn't control anything use fund they do that like you said it's just a fax when there is money coming in from the ministry they say there is a use fund tournament all they care about is the is is what they will eat from that tournament that that money that comes out from government they forgot that this is an industry that billions are moving around billions of pounds billions of dollars they are exchanging hands everywhere 
There is a lot of money. I go to Mali to take players. I know how it is in the association. It's different. Okay, so to add it's to very, that, very different. you set up an academy in Kaduna. You just come up and you set up an academy. Is the structure to set up an academy in South Africa, is it the same thing? What's the process to set up an academy in South Africa? In South Africa, before you do anything, you must register. There is nothing you will do that you cannot register with the government. You must register with the government. Nothing you will do. And that is why the country is, is, is uh, improving. You can't, because you must pay tax. You can't run an academy whereby they're going to do, you deal with European teams. They have to pay you in foreign currency. The, the Reserve Bank will know all this account. You must have the name of the team. You can't just, it's not like the, the name of the, uh, the account. I just gave them one metal and I said the player now is coming from Future of Africa. And then the, but the, the banking details that is coming to them carries Mohammed. No, it must be Mohammed. It has to be Future of Africa. They must pay to Future of Africa's account. And now that feature of Africa's account, how do you, you can't open an account in South Africa here without being fully registered, well-structured. You can't. You must register. Everything you must have, all your, your you must be legit. You, 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 you get me? Because the company, the, the government, the tax that they're going to get from, they make something from there. You, 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 you understand? Yeah. For me, I am saying all this, if Nigeria keep it the way, it is fine. It, it doesn't, uh, it's even better for me because nobody hold me to anything. I just go the way, just like every other, maybe some of my colleagues who we do the same business with, they wouldn't like this thing that I'm saying, even that ah, this guy is saying they must regulate us or whatever, whatever. But I want a well restructured Nigeria. I want everything to be structured. Me too well organized whereby everybody can benefit you see in this industry there is if football is going well there is going to be a lot of uh, people who will be benefiting it's not only the players it's not only the players it's not only the the, the coaches or the club owners i am telling you a lot of people now can you imagine in 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 in, in Eimba now if if let's say in Aba, uh, Aba let's say they have two million people generally yeah two million the stadium maybe it's not even up to hundred thousand no not up to fifty thousand hundred thousand capacity not up to fifty thousand now let's say they have 200,000 who support AIMBA out of that 2 million people. If all those uh, 200,000 people during the days for AIMBA games, because Nigeria is not like here or that where you can say you will sit at home and watch. Now, people who sell food, around the stadium you can find all people come to a day the day of the game people sell the is the um, the bar people in the in the bar you know the 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 the, the lounge the, yeah, the restaurant where they sell uh, alcohol and what restaurant everything people who comes if the, all those 50 to to, to 60,000 will come around the stadium now can you imagine what uh, all those people, vendors, whatever, some who sell cups, some who sell, they're going to make money. That is what makes the, the, the European teams what they are. They sell all these things, people benefit. But now you will find very few teams, look, canoe pillars. The people who are running canoe pillars, they, know, they don't know anything. Otherwise, that one, that club, supposed to be self-sufficient yeah with the amount of followers they have but they just come and then they, all they know is they get taken and when they get they get taken they eat it because the salaries of the players and everything is paid by the government 
the governor will just pay. Now he said, oh, 400,000 budget for, for, for pillars. And then he siphoned maybe 100 million and gave them three. And then those other ones, they do like that and find everybody, he just thinks his pocket, his pocket. Why? Why everybody in Nigeria, all he thinks is himself, every single person. It's like when you are talking earlier, it's just that it's an interview if we was face to face with you who could have chat a lot. They put the mother of Rashidi Ekini and Oparaj on uh, no. that it has of, and you're announcing it everywhere. What do what is that? What is what is that? Why are you why are you announcing that? Do so you that need is something that you need to talk about? That is not something you need to announce to anybody. But in Nigeria, they do so many wrongs. And that is why every day, if me, anyone who talks to me, I will always say it. The people who are in charge of our football, unfortunately, I have nothing against them, but they are not the right people who are supposed to be. They don't have the capacity to move Nigerian football to the next level. You can see it. Some of them, they are friends to... to, to, to to, to intermediaries, some are friends to people who own academies. Now they see what profit they are making. They see what profit. And now instead of you to now Villa and say, hey, no, listen. In Nigeria, if you are in Portacot, if you are in Enugu, if you are in this, would if you have a system, a good system. Rangers is never supposed to go look for player to buy a player from from Gombe United. They will have players every time that they are that are coming through the ranks. Yeah, you 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 you, you understand. Yeah. So many, but nobody cares anything. There. Nobody look. Talents are in Nigeria. I sat with during 2010 World Cup. I was fortunate, I was sitting with the Asenwenga. And that day, Nigeria lost to, to, oh, yeah. to Greece. Greece, Greece. Greece, is it? Greece. Greece. It's Greece that knocks us out, right? Yeah. Yes. I was sitting, we are sitting. Then he said to me, how is it possible? At that time, he was... In his calculation, he said 120 million. He said, How is it possible for a country with 120 million people they cannot dominate? He said, He said, That population is like seven countries in Europe. <laughs> seven. How do they manage those countries to get the talent that they are using? You understand? To yeah. beat. To beat yeah. all the other countries, say 120 million. You look at uh, Spain is how many million? Uh, France how many million are they? All, it, but they are able to get talent from there to come. He said, eh. he, he said it's not possible. It's, he didn't believe it. He was asking me there. And do you know that when Nigeria lost, some of the guys, ex-internationals. Some were looking to go into the NFF uh, to be to be president, to be what I was in. They were in a bar celebrating. And the Nigerian Football Federation was the one who is paying for their hotels and everything here in South Africa. But Nigeria lost and they are celebrating. And we said, yo, which can which Type of people are we? Are ah, Nigeria? We are. We are different. We are. We are very, very, we are. very, 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 very. See that different. thing. That thing that yes. happened in 2010 that you saw in South Africa. I was at the World Cup in Brazil in 2014, and the same thing happens. Everything. I was. I was with Asen Wenger for for the finals in 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 Rio at the Maracana, and we had we had a chat and similar conversation. And then, when Nigeria lost to France, we are, we, are, we, are, we are unique. That's the word I can use. You know that there were Nigerians who were happy that we lost 
so that they will not, they will not, that the, the FA will not spend more money that was allocated for us in case we progress. Yes, yes. And I was like, are these people reasonable? Okay, so finally, let's come to coach. So you mentioned Asen Wenger. Let's come to coach now. The trend. And I see Yusuf, like I said earlier on, suspended. Stevie Kesh, um, Sam Sassia, banned for life. We're still waiting for his appeal after the COVID-19. Then now, uh, they're talking of, uh, we've had, I would say, the age grade. People, everybody say, coaches collect money. Then, recently, is the bomb share. Taiye Taiwo, Emmanuel Saki, Buki, all of them said, uh, even Brandy Day, that they were asked to pay money. Some said 30 million, some said $10,000. Depends on what currency to go to the 2014 World Cup. You've been in the system long enough to know. Have you ever encountered a situation whereby you want to push a player and a coach, what coach that is, I don't know, but a coach asks you, oh boy, must scratch my back. Oh. If not, this player, yes, he's good, but not be ball one shop. Have you seen that kind of situation? You see, I'm very, very surprised that a lot of Nigerians, when Obasi first came out, I think among these people that you mentioned, Obasi was the one to first came out. Yeah. Then Tayo Polos, and then Ideye, and then uh, Sarki also. You see this thing, and then I had some people who were attacking them. Why didn't you say hey, that? Why did they say them since? Why did they wait for this long? Since then, why do you wait till this moment? What, what? It's not, you can't decide for someone when he should talk. The person will say things when he is ready. At those days that they wanted them to talk, they are not ready. They were not ready. If they voice it out that time, maybe uh, they, they, they can't take it. They could not. Now they feel they are ready. They can talk. And to be honest, it's something that anybody who is, can dress it the way he likes is something that all of us know is happening. It's happening. But not to every player. Yeah. So that is why you can have some who can defend it, who can tell, say, oh, no, this thing, they didn't ask me, what, what, what. But if you happen to play for Nigerian national team and you are not asked, you must clap for yourself. You must stand God. But to others who are asked, and when you hear that those who said they are asked, they come out to say it, you should not attack them. You should not say, no, it is not, because... Your experience and theirs is different. different. One thing I would like to bring to your attention was that so a while ago, Daniel Amokachi said coaches are taking bribes. And a lot of people were, hey, what, 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 what? He said it clearly. And now, Obasti come out to say, right or wrong, you can you should not uh, you, you don't you can't attack him because in as much as you are saying you no know, okay the person who he is accusing and this boy he was not saying is Keshi who asked him it's just people want to turn it to be, to look like he is saying is accusing Keshi he didn't say Keshi he said they asked him they it is not one person. It's not one, but Keshi is the one in charge. May his soul rest in peace. If he brings it, they should not condemn him and be thinking, oh, okay, he talks, Keshi is dead. No, he is telling us now to look, look very well. But then that's, why, can... that's why I brought the question to you. Yes. We can talk about other people's experience. Lawa, Mohammed. Have you experienced it or somebody you know and you are private to it? Who did that? that because you but, see, one of the things that I said that I also blame Obuke for, I am, I am a firm believer of what you just said, Nada. Uh, guy, allow me to say my truth when I want to say it. If you can say it in the day it happens to you, that's you. Me, 
Maybe when it happened to me, I was in shock. I didn't believe it can happen to me. And when I get into shock, it can take me 10 years to get away from my shock. Okay? But allow me. So long and short, this is, this is what I'm saying now. Long and short, uh, as it happened to you or someone you know, like when we're talking about voodoo now, you gave me an example. Yes, yes. Has it happened to you? I've had, I've had, it hasn't happened to me. It didn't happen to me, but I have had people close to me who have experienced that, who have told me this, look what is going on, look what is going on. I know, and like I was telling to one, my, my friend, I said, hey, these things that you people are doing, this minister that is saying he wants names and all that, if you if you can tell what he wants to do with those names when he had them, he will find the names, he will get the names, but he won't, he won't do anything. Just like Wali before he came out, sorry to go into that, I'm not yeah. a politician, but Wali they said, okay, criminal what 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 bribery way the, all these things corruption this that that, that what, what what really happens people what will really jail. Is going everybody will be the jail it is so, oh, it's the same thing now so for me even for the players who are not saying they are wrong to say it or whatever if you can't keep it you say it fine but i don't see the use because nothing is going to happen you just going to to, to tarnish some people's reputation by saying it because they are not going to be punished. They are not going to, no decision will be taken. Like you said, you see with Salus, Salus is still with the NFF, with the, 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 the NFF, uh, still working with the NFF. You see with Siasia, you will, let me tell you, this thing, if they begin to mention the names, the minister might find his name the, among the list there in the names of so he might find his name somewhere. <laughs> Someone might accuse the minister. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. I agree. I agree. I agree. You know, I was privy. They said they should I was privy to some information that connects the former minister of sports, uh, Solomon Dalon. But you know, sometimes you just look at this and. I beg, let it go, okay? So, uh, I want to say a very big thank you. If the thing is, when me and you talk, because we're both from the same, like, the same kind of DNA when it comes to how we see this sport, to my industry, I'm a sports media entrepreneur. I can only become a billionaire if the industry works. But as long as the industry is not working, I'm only getting trickle drop. I can put in the effort of an elephant and adverse the size of an ant. So I will always work very hard to see, okay, you know what? Put in the elephant size, hippopotamus, alligator, blue whale, so that maybe I can get a catfish at the end of the day instead of an ant. But if the industry works, I mean, in South Africa, for instance, there's a media, a street, a local media called Soka Laduma. Yes, yes, yes. They are not super sport. They are not SABC. They are just doing the same thing I'm doing. But those guys are living well. Yeah. If, we, yeah. if we go out, you obviously look at them and you feel like they are bigger than I am. But sometimes I sit down and I say, I have better ideas than these guys. I know yes, them. yes, <laughs> and knowledge. I'm yeah. telling you. But the environment have... they are in gives them wings to fly, like Red Bull will say. Yeah, that's why you can take a South African player to the to, 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 to UK. Sign him in the EPL. He can leave that EPL after one season to return back to, to South Africa. Because if he comes back to South Africa, he is going to end very well. He is going to be... He's going to... He, everything is, is comfortable. He's going to be all right. If you come... Sometimes some of my players here... I've got players in Europe. If... I am with one of the ones here in, 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 in South Africa. And maybe the one in Europe see the settings of okay, the, the cars this guy is driving and other things. He will be telling me, ah, in, in Africa, he said, 
you 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 think don't use nigeria to categorize the whole africa you don't the people here they the players drive the best cars they live in the best houses they they well look after very well look after they respect players here and that was what i am looking for because can you imagine one day one told me how can nigeria be good you people you live in you you you, you are living in south africa why can't you come back here and then you fix it? I said, listen, if I take a player from Kaduna and to sign at Eimba, how much will Eimba give me as a, as a commission? What will they give me? Maybe I, I will fight with them even before I will get to the, the, the money. They tell me maybe hey, you can get 200,000, you can get 300,000, or what? If I take a player here from, if you move a player from a, 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 a Golden Arrows to Kaiser Chiefs, to this thing, I'm telling you, <clears throat> by the time they pay you, you can live for, for four years without working in Nigeria. You will be comfortable, you will be okay. So now just look, imagine if Nigerian League can give you that yeah. while you are at home. While you are at home, do what, what, who would like to be somewhere? Somewhere else. Yeah, it is difficult no matter how successful you are in any country. It's difficult for you. It is better if you can be successful in Nigeria. Yeah. It's, I'm telling you. It is not. You can have anything you like in that country. It will not give you the same the joy satisfaction you like being at home. Yeah. at home. But now the home is not. You can't go there. The home is fighting against you. <laughs> it's working to see. Yeah, you <laughs> Don't worry. Someday I will give you that list that you are looking for. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you so yeah, much for we'll being on my show. Day. I really appreciate it. Thank so. you for sharing your thoughts, your ideas. What I love, what I love with this conversation that we've had is the willingness to be transparent and to be honest and the desire to see that you, I mean, you have an academy in Nigeria. You didn't say, I beg, let me not talk so that they don't regulate it. We're enjoying the free pass. But you also want it to be good. Like I always tell people, even the media that we run, even I run an online media, let them make it work well, let them regulate it, let them tax me, I don't care, I'll pay. But I don't wanna be walking and feel like, I love this. I'm imagining somebody who does not love it. They can't even do what I'm doing. They can't. Because yeah, if you don't true. love it, that's true. the that's frustration true. that comes in, after one, you'll be like, I beg, let me go and look for a bank job or insurance job or something. Now uh, we just give up. Let me pack my family and relocate abroad. That's why people relocate. But thank you very much yeah. for your time. Thank and you, uh, this is not going to be our last conversation. I would still talk to you again. You talk to me about some latest development. I'm working on getting the statistics of the total amount of Nigerian players that are in South Africa right now. I don't have that. So I hope I can trust you to help me out with it. But next time we'll have a conversation. And I know that in you, I have a home whenever I visit Joe Bob. I'll come there. You know, my uh, knee, yes, always. My knee will not allow me. Always, to come always. I'll be always. There. You, you can you. always when you when you when you come in, you just let me know. All You're right. welcome, Baba. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. Have a great day. My regards to your family and your players as well. Bye. Next time, maybe I'll talk you to one of your you. players, the one in South Africa or the one in in Europe. But thank you so much. Anyone you anyone you want, you just let me know. I will. If you want, you just let me know so that I can, I can, I can connect you. I can inform him and then give you a right, the right time, the right date for you to. I would love that because you see this thing you're doing. I know that you're trying to 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 do the things for 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 yourself. You're trying to push it to the level where you want it to be. And I know that when you interview one or two players, it also going to be giving you a, a good uh, uh, viewership. Yeah. So whenever, whoever, when you follow, you check the ones that I am handling, 
definitely I will I will help you with. I will arrange it. All right. Thank you very much. And have a good night rest. Sure.